Hey, it's Jared with State of Tech. Today, we're gonna to talk about which iPad you should buy here in the later portion of 2021. Now, the iPad is a little confusing with its naming. It's not as cut and dry as the iPhone is and a lot of other Apple products. There are different naming structures here that don't all really fit together. And so I'm making this video because a lot of times people are asking me which iPad is the best for them. Now, in order to answer that question, I really need to know how you're going to use the iPad. So I'm gonna do my best to describe the best use cases for each iPad that Apple currently has to help you better make a decision. But use this as just information to help you make that decision. Uh, I don't know exactly how you're planning on using an iPad or what's important to you, but I hope that some of the things that I talk about here in this video will help, uh, help you make a better choice. So we're gonna start out with the iPad mini. Apple just recently updated the iPad mini and the iPad mini has been a fan favorite for a long time. It's a smaller device that uh, is a, a nice form factor and I really like the iPad mini. I haven't had an iPad mini in a while because Apple often takes a very long time updating this device. It has a long shelf life and the older version was getting a little bit slow for me and the design and the layout was a little bit dated and so I ended up giving that to one of my kids to use but now that the new iPad mini is out, I've been using this device a lot. Now I use the iPad mini to take with me wherever I'm going because it's a very portable sized device. It gives me iPad features like Apple Pencil and uh, I have cellular in it and of course it's a larger display so that I can browse websites, I can view content on it, I can take notes. There are lots of benefits to the iPad mini but it is small. So depending on whether or not you need something that is small as opposed to something that has a larger display, which we'll talk about as we talk about the other devices here, that may come into account in, in you choosing which one to get. Now, I like the iPad mini because I am an aviation student. So I'm learning, uh, I'm getting my pilot's license or working towards getting my pilot's license. And so I know that I will use it in the airplane. And then I also use it in a lot of situations where I wanna be taking notes. I've always been a person who likes to take notes and keep tabs on things. And I just, I don't like doing that in a notebook anymore. I wanna have it all digital so that I can have access to all of my information anytime that I need it. And so an iPad mini is very practical because of its size, but it is a bit small and Apple has larger devices such as the standard iPad that they're still making. The standard iPad has uh, kind of the same a similar design that it's always had. It has the fingerprint reader on the front. It has the, the bigger bezels and so there's you know, black border all the way around it, and it is a little bit older of a design. But Apple just recently updated it, and so it has better specs. It's uh, more powerful than it used to be. It still does use the lightning port. It is the only iPad that Apple has left that connects via a lightning port as opposed to USB-C, which is what the rest of the iPads utilize now. So the standard iPad is a really well-priced. It is a very budget-friendly device as far as iPads go. And so you can get a decent performing device for a good price and have that larger display. So if you are just gonna use an iPad for browsing the web, for reading, for some light internet usage, maybe even watching some videos from time to time. The standard iPad is gonna be more than perfect for you. If you're thinking about doing a little bit more, such as mobile gaming, you want a better display and maybe a more, uh, more modern device that has Face ID, then you'll wanna go with the iPad Air. The iPad Air, uh, Apple updates every year or two, and it has the more modern design, it has the more modern colors, it matches the iPhone, like the base level iPhone, like the iPhone 13, it matches the, the new iMac, the base level ones with all the colors, and so it's a great device that fits right in that mid-range uh, for those that want modern technology but don't need top level horsepower in their devices. And so the iPad Air is absolutely fantastic. It has the leading edge technology inside of it. It has great battery life. It, the display is fantastic and of course Face ID. And so that device is a, a great choice for those that want 
the best technology that they can get without spending top-notch dollars. Of course, the iPad Air can get a little expensive if you put cellular and add larger storage options, but entry level, it's really not too bad based on the performance that you're getting. The big jump would be to the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro comes in two different sizes, 11 and 12.9. I have the 12.9 inch iPad Pro here that I've been using with the, uh, the Magic Keyboard case. And I love this form factor for editing photos, for viewing content, and for those situations where I just wanna replace my laptop and not take a laptop with me. I have had the iPad Pro 11 inch, and while I think the 11 inch is a little bit more practical for carrying around because it's smaller, it's a bit lighter, it just doesn't do it for me when it comes to photo editing. The liquid retina display that I get on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro is just so much better when it comes to editing photos. And if I was viewing HDR content, which I don't that often, it would be a better option for that as well. So the 12.9 also with the keyboard, the keyboard layout is a little bit more usable on the 12.9 than the 11 inch. I felt that the 11 inch keyboard, things were squished too much, like the return key was so small that I was missing it all the time. And I just, the keyboard wasn't as practical to use quite often on the 11 inch iPad Pro. And so in my time using the 11 inch iPad Pro, I decided I probably would just stick with my iPad Pro 12.9 inch and get rid of the 11 inch because the 12.9 is just more practical for editing photos, for typing out longer emails and stuff like that. And now that Apple had updated the iPad mini, the iPad mini can be my simple travel device that is easier to get in and out of a bag or not even just carry because it's so much smaller. The iPad Pro 12.9, not quite as practical for that. So the iPad Pro, obviously much more powerful with the new M1 chip. It's overpowered for what most people are going to need, especially with the apps that are available. It'll be interesting to see what Apple does over the next year or two, whether or not they decide to bring some Mac OS features to the M1 iPad, or if they keep that line very clearly drawn in the sand as they have so far. I speculated that and hoped that there would be some additional features that would come to the iPad Pro with the M1 chip because why put the M1 chip in it if there wasn't going to be some additional Mac OS type of features. So the iPad Pro obviously quite a bit more expensive but quite a bit more capable just because of the performance. Now any of these iPads are going to allow, especially if you're running I believe up to iPad OS 13, which most of us are running at least 14 or the most recent 15, you can connect external hard drives to your iPad. So that means you don't need to spend a ton of money on storage because you think maybe I need storage, you can plug in a storage device to your iPad through the USB-C port on it, or if you have a standard iPad, I think it does work on the standard iPad over the lightning port, it's just not gonna be as fast as USB Type-C. With that, I also have a video talking about how to do that, so make sure to check that video out. Another thing to factor in is battery life. Obviously, larger devices are gonna have better battery life. Even on this 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the liquid retina, you know, larger display, this iPad gets better battery life than the 11 inch iPad Pro did, and also even this iPad mini with the smaller display. The larger device has a larger battery and that's gonna give you longer battery life. All of the current iPads also support Apple Pencil. The only iPad that doesn't support Apple Pencil 2 is the base level iPad, but that does support Apple Pencil 1. What I love about the Apple Pencil 2 is that it charges wirelessly and so I can just put my Apple Pencil very easily right on top of the iPad and it starts charging. Whereas with the Apple Pencil 1, you have to plug it in, either plugging it into the port um, on the bottom of your iPad or plugging it into a charger, which I don't think is a very good experience and I fear that I would snap off that little, uh, that little charging connector. So Apple Pencil 2 support on all iPads except 
the standard iPad. So that might be another consideration factor in which iPad you get is which iPads support Apple Pencil 2. And the standard base level iPad does not, supports only Apple Pencil 1. So uh, that's gonna do it. I, I really, in order to give you specific thoughts on what iPad you should get, I would need to know the specific uses that you would, uh, you would be utilizing this iPad within. So if you have any questions, please ask down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer. I know a lot of other people tend to chime in and answer as well. Um, iPads are a fantastic device. I didn't buy into them initially, but I use them quite a bit because they are just so practical uh, compared to most other devices that are out there. So if you have any other questions, let me know down below. Click subscribe to get notified when we put out new videos and give this one a thumbs up if it helped you in your decision making on iPads. But that's going to do it for today. Thanks so much and hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.